Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionals one more time, continuing our great playlist called Pulmonology. In the previous video, we have talked about asthma and then allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis. Today, I'll talk about chronic bronchitis. It's a COPD because COPD is an umbrella term that includes two things. The blue bloaters, also known as chronic bronchitis, and the pink puffers, which is also known as emphysema. Today is chronic bronchitis. The patient is coughing tons of mucus. It's an obstructive lung disease. Translation, the patient cannot get the air out. Translation, FEV1 is low. FVC is low. FEV1 to FVC ratio is also low. With that being said, now let's get started. Some words of wisdom. I never let schooling interfere with my education, said Mark Twain. And this is really great. Because if you just learn for the sake of passing your exam, you will not be a great doctor. We divide lung disease into obstructive and restrictive. Obstructive, the patient can't get the air out. In restrictive, the patient can't get the air in. The question will describe a patient with productive cough. This cough is productive with copious amount or cupfuls, tons of mucus or pus. If it's tons of mucus, this is chronic bronchitis. Tons of pus, this is bronchiectasis. And if this is a kid, this is usually cystic fibrosis. Obstructive lung diseases for asthma, chronic bronchitis, emphysema, bronchiectasis. COPD include chronic bronchitis and emphysema. Related to cigarette smoking, most patients have both bronchitis and emphysema. It has to be chronic bronchitis. We'll talk about chronic bronchitis today, emphysema in the following video and then how to diagnose and manage COPD in a later video. Chronic bronchitis, definition, it's a chronic inflammation of the conducting airway. So it's in the conducting zone, guys. It's here, it's here. It's not in the respiratory zone and alveoli. This has gotta be emphysema, man, but not chronic bronchitis. Chronic bronchitis is more proximal. It's a clinical diagnosis. Oh, really? Yes. The patient is having a productive cough for at least, at least three months for two consecutive years. So let's say we are talking about 2019 and 2020. The patient is having symptom in both of the years. Those are two consecutive years for at least three months. So let's say October, November, December of 2019. And then in 2020, he's having symptom in January, February, and March. Again, okay, two conditions are met. At least three months. Yep, two consecutive years. Indeed. Causes smoking, I'm not about talking about cigars or e-cigarettes or vaping. Those could be contributors, but the main thing, okay, the villain is the cigarette. Because I hate all of them. I hate cigarettes, I hate cigars, I hate e-cigarettes, but I will not lie to you. When we're talking about science, we have to be very specific. We're talking here about cigarette smoking. So you think that e-cigarettes and vaping are healthy? I didn't say that. But when we're talking about chronic bronchitis, the most of the cases are related to smoke cigarettes also cystic fibrosis can lead to chronic bronchitis pathogenesis chronic inflammation stimulation of the submucosal mucus secreting glands that's why the patient is coughing tons of mucus constriction of segmental bronchi and proximal bronchioles again this is conducting zone this is not the respiratory zone leading to irreversible fibrosis Bronchoconstriction will decrease the radius, and as you know, airway resistance is inversely proportional to radius. When you decrease the radius, you increase the resistance, called common sense. Clinically, dyspnea, which is SOB. This is not a cuss word, because I'm a good guy, I don't curse. This is shortness of breath. Usually starts later in disease. Contrast that with emphysema. In emphysema, the dyspnea starts early on in the disease. Productive cough, yes. Stimulation of submucosal mucus gland, increased secretion of mucus. The question will describe it as copious amount or cupfuls or tons of mucus. Not teaspoons, because teaspoon is not a cup. A teaspoon is very small. A cup is like this, man. Tons of sputum. Tons of sputum, chronic bronchitis. Tons of pus, bronchiectasis. Signs, cyanosis, that's why we call them blue bloaters. Blue because they have cyanosis, bloaters because they tend to be obese. Why? Because of the air trapping. They are trapping air inside of them. Because remember, what's the definition of obstructive lung disease? I cannot get the air out. End of discussion. 
This cyanosis is caused by hypoxemia and hypercapnia. Yes, if this is your lung, all right, and at the end there is the alveoli. There is chronic bronchitis, there is inflammation here, baby, okay, and I cannot get the air out. So, if I cannot get the air out, I'm not going to be able to get the air in easily. And I'm, I will be stacking air on top of air on top of air. This will lead to le less oxygen going to the blood. Hypoxemia. This will lead to trapping CO2 in the alveoli, increasing PCO2. And this is going to lead to respiratory acidosis. What's the definition of cyanosis? Bluish discoloration of skin and mucous membrane due to presence of deoxygenated hemoglobin, which means hemoglobin that's carrying anything except for oxygen, greater than 5 grams per deciliter. And here we have less oxygen, more CO2, more deoxygenated hemoglobin. That's why you end up with cyanosis. Since there is air trapping and air stacking, we're stacking air on top of air on top of air, the patient will have a barrel chest. Vesicular breath sounds, which are normal breath sounds, but you might find something abnormal, which is mid-inspiratory crackles, crackles sound like a hookah because normally your lungs have air and then you're having mucus which is a fluid air plus fluid it's like, it's like a hookah it's like making bubbles with a straw and a glass of water these crackles by the way disappear on coughing contrast that with bronchogenic carcinoma it's a cancer do you think when the patient coughs the crackles will disappear no you cannot cough cancer sorry expiratory wheezing so inspiratory crackles with expiratory wheezing before we jump into the diagnosis let me tell you something in chronic bronchitis or any obstructive lung disease there is prolonged expiratory phase because the definition of an obstructive lung disease the patient cannot get the air out it's like this it takes a lot of time to get the air out prolonged expiratory phase Clinical diagnosis, yes, chronic bronchitis is a clinical diagnosis. Productive cough for at least three months for two consecutive years. Again, at least. If it's three years, it's still chronic bronchitis. Get your head out of your sphincter. PFTs, you have obstructive pattern. Translation, decrease FEV1, decrease FBC, increase residual volume and TLC, but decrease the FEV1 to FBC ratio. This is how you diagnose obstructive lung disease. Then you look at the severity. How do I determine the severity? You look at the FEV1 only, not the ratio, but just the FEV1. The lower the FEV1, the greater the severity. ABG, arterial blood gas, you'll find hypoxemia. What is a hypoxemia? Hypoxemia is decreased P, small AO2. This is the partial pressure of arterial oxygen. That's why we call them blue bloaters, because they are hypoxemic. They are cyanotic because the percentage of deoxyhemoglobin or the amount of deoxygenated hemoglobin is greater than 5 grams per deciliter. There is respiratory acidosis. No wonder, because when you trap the CO2 in your alveoli, it's going to lead to H2CO3, thanks to the carbonic anhydrase, and this H2CO3 is a freaking acid. So, respiratory acidosis, pH is low, that's the definition of acidosis. PCO2 is high, that's the definition of respiratory acidosis. The kidneys are trying to compensate. They see respiratory acidosis. Let's cause a metabolic alkalosis. How would you do this? You increase the base or the alkali, which is the HCO3 or bicarbonate. Medicine makes so much sense only if explained properly. AA gradient is widened. What is the AA gradient? You're gonna have to watch my previous video on AA gradient in this glorious playlist. But in brief, if the lung is normal, AA gradient is normal. In chronic bronchitis, your lungs are not normal. You're having a chronic bronchitis. AA gradient is gonna be widened. DLCO is normal because the alveoli is normal. I did not say the bronchi are normal because they are not, but the alveoli are normal. Contrast that with emphysema. Emphysema, you have destroyed that elastic tissue or elastin of the alveoli, and then the DLCO is gonna be abnormal. Radiology, let's do a chest x-ray. By the way, most chest x-rays are not anteroposterior, but posteroanterior, which is the same picture that you know, but we just call it posteroanterior because there is a difference in radiology, but as they say in New York, it's complicated. On x-ray, you'll find increased bronchial marking. Oh, really? No wonder. I'm having chronic bronchitis, and I'm having bronchial markings. Who could have imagined? 
The heart is enlarged and horizontally oriented. Why? Because of the barrel chest. Here is a normal patient with normal chest. You have a lung here and you have a lung here and your heart is like this. Just for the sake of the argument. When you have a barrel chest in chronic bronchitis or emphysema, it's like this. This widening of the transverse thoracic diameter is gonna cause the heart to become like this. It's not enlarged. Okay, I'm sorry, my, my drawing capabilities are... I think I have autism or something. And there is your lung and there is the other lung. All of the lung, like the total lung capacity is increased. So that's like a huge lung. Now this heart was more vertical. This heart is more enlarged and horizontally oriented. Okay. But is it like enlarged because there is cardiomegaly? No, no, no. Look at the lateral chest x-ray. You'll find that in chronic bronchitis, the heart is actually shrinking on the lateral x-ray, which means it's not a cardiomegaly. Because when there is cardiomegaly, your heart will increase in every dimension. But when it's a just a barrel chest, it's only increased with the PA film, but shrinking on the lateral film, proving that this is not cardiomegaly, and you should get your head out of your sphincter. Let's talk about flow volume loops, not to be confused with pressure volume loops. I have a video about flow volume loops in this playlist. Normal is here. Inspiration. <gasps> Expiration. <sighs> okay, in COPD, inspiration. <sighs> okay, slightly decreased than this, so not too much. But then, uh, this this is a severe COPD, by the way. But then expiration. <sighs> and there is like coving here. And then when you give bronchodilator, it doesn't change very much, as you see. That's why COPD is a fixed obstruction. And this is different from asthma because bronchial asthma is a reversible episodic obstruction. And here is asthma, baby. You see this when you give bronchodilator challenge? Okay, this is a dramatic improvement, man. Complications of chronic bronchitis. First, air trapping. That's why we have a barrel chest. Chronic respiratory acidosis. Yep. Secondary pulmonary artery hypertension. Ooh. Squamous metaplasia. Normally you have columnar epithelium which is pseudo stratified with goblet cell but now you have squamous epithelium we call this metaplasia squamous metaplasia because now the cells are squamous goblet metaplasia in the bronchioles normally the bronchioles have no goblet cells but now there are goblet cells that we call them goblet metaplasia core pulmonary occurs after a prolonged marked reduction of the fev1 Core pulmonary means there is a problem in the heart, which is the core, due to a problem in the lung, which is the pulmonary. So it's a lung problem causing a heart problem. Do you think that will cause pulmonary artery hypertension? You bet. And by the way, in chronic bronchitis, you can have polycythemia. Why? There is increased APO secretion, we call the secondary absolute polycythemia, and this is compensatory or appropriate increase in APO, secondary to hypoxia. Now to my favorite part of the video, the clinical pearls. Chronic bronchitis will lead to hypoxia. Indeed, appropriate increase in APO as a response. Okay, we got it. The most common cause of hemoptysis is chronic bronchitis. It's not lung cancer, it's not mesothelioma, it's not TB, it's chronic bronchitis. Common things are common, guys. Common things are common. Moraxella cateralis, which is one of the famous triad, which contains, you know, the famous triad of bacteria? Yes, I know it. Number one, we have strept pneumo. Number two, we have Haemophilus influenza. And number three, we have the Moraxella cateralis. They can cause three diseases, sinusitis, chronic bronchitis, and otitis media. The best predictor of FEV1 is how much cigarettes did you smoke? All right, so it's the pack year of cigarette smoking. The best thing a COPD patient can do is to stop smoking, and the earlier the better before permanent irreversible lung changes take place. Bronchitis without an objective airway obstruction is not COPD. It has to be objective. What do you mean? You go do the FEV1, the FVC, and the FEV1, FVC, the flow volume loop, and all of these tests. Once you have objectively 
confirm that this is an objective airway obstruction now we can talk about COPD but I don't believe in absolute objective truth okay is your statement absolutely true ha ha it's a self-defeating argument I don't care what you think but if you live in the United States Florida is in the south man it's here Mr. Long, I'm sorry here south okay oh I don't agree no one cares you are what's known as wrong there is objective truth whether you like it or not is irrelevant man I'm just I, I tell you the facts as they are I don't sugarcoat stuff I'm not your Golgi apparatus thank you so much for watching please subscribe join the tribe hit the bell to get notified and please smash like follow me on Facebook I have more than 100 cases there you can get my premium videos my cases my post notes my PDF notes and even the slides of this video and every other video on this channel organized in Dropbox folders Thank you so much for watching as always be safe stay happy and study hard this is medicosis perfectionalis where medicine makes perfect sense